Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am sharing how I made this Christmas card using one of my newest stamp sets sprinkled with joy. This is a stamp set from L'Enfant and it exists for a while and I was one of those people that thought that I didn't need it. Um, but then I don't know if you saw it but one of the Challenger Crafty friends uh, that me and Julia are doing, um, there Julia made a family mice uh, adventure in the kitchen um, so using this amazing stamp set and I realized that it fitted perfectly with the size of all these mice and since I am addicted to the mice of long form I just had to buy this stamp set. I also bought the add-on to make it interactive and I'm planning on making another Christmas card with it uh, but I have a lot of other cards to share with you as well, so I don't know when that's happening, but it will follow this year. So here I'm stamping out all the images. I have used some mice from Dandy Day as well as from the Crazy Antics. Um, I also thought of using more, uh, but I didn't want to make a larger sized card than a regular, so not to have too many things going on, I decided on keeping it with three mice. So the trickiest part about this stem set, I think, is getting that oven plate inside of the oven correctly. And there is not a right or wrong placement, I think. You can place it a bit more upwards, a bit more downwards. Um, I try to place it sort of in the middle um, and create my back of my oven still uh, but on this card there is a little bit of a crookiness <laughs> in my plate uh, and I hope you didn't realize it while watching uh, the photo but as we are all just saying what we think and what we are doing in YouTube videos I'm just saying it now and then probably you will notice it right now but maybe you didn't in the picture so that's the important thing <laughs> um, I have stamped it out with a Gina K Design Amalgam Ink onto Nina 110 and I'm going to do some Copic colouring. So onto my colouring, for the most part I am just starting with my darkest colour then my mid-tone, lightest color, or if I have four tones, of course, I'm adding a few more in between. Um, but that's how I currently color with my Copics on Nina. You can also use other techniques. You can also start with your lightest color. Uh, but in my opinion, it's just what you prefer and what you're comfortable with. Um, coloring with Copics is a bit different to just the markers that you're used to from in your early years and stuff so just try to find something that works for you and as long as it works it's the perfect way to color with it so here I am creating a bit of shadow on the edges of my oven um, the only special thing maybe is the light source inside of the oven that I try to recreate um, which wasn't anything fancy. Uh, you will see it a bit later. Um, I just colored everything in as I would do without light source and then I took a yellow marker and just went over everything that I wanted to have a bit of light on. Also what I noticed when coloring these images was that I was really messy with my coloring. Um, you know there are some days that everything works and everything is perfect <laughs> and then there are moments that you are going outside the lines like continuously but then there is the colorless blender from the Copic markers and if you're new to Copic coloring this marker you need to have um, I only started with Copic markers with a small amount of markers what I did have was a complete set of the warm grays, which I'm using for the oven. Uh, but there is also a colorless blender included. And if I didn't have that one in the beginning of my copy coloring career, um, <laughs> I would have stopped immediately. It really helps when you go outside the lines. And I just cannot 
let it go um, when I see that I have from outside the lines and I'm, I just need to fix it. And the colorless blender is perfect. You will see me use it a lot on this coloring. Um, but yeah, coloring is quite similar to my other card that I created. If you haven't seen it on my Instagram, I also shared a pink card. Actually exactly the same card as this one, only instead of blues, I'm using pinks. Um, so therefore, uh, I have a blog post ready. Uh, I will link to it down below. So if you want the description of every item I used on this card, check in the description box. If you want to see what I used for the pink card, check my blog post. There is a different in marker, of course, but I tried to use uh, some pattern papers from the same pattern paper pack uh, from Honeybee Stamps. It's the Spring Lullaby and it's one of my favorite, favorite pattern papers ever, so far. Okay, so that's the only thing that changed, I think, uh, comparing to the other card. Um, but yeah, I'm not showing the pink one in this video, also not at the end. But if you checked out my blog post or if you, s you have seen my Instagram post, let me know down below which one you liked more. Um, the pink one was the one I created first uh, without filming. Um, I tried to color in these images uh, during the day uh, just while sitting in the living room without having any material to film. Um, so I didn't and then I tried to create a card with it and the pink one resulted and Then I really liked it and I just wanted to have a video as well But I don't like recreating cards exactly the same. So if I do Create a sort of a similar card. I always try to, to Change up the colors. I don't know if you're the same, but um, that's me uh, So this one is blue so I'm just creating the shadow on the back of my oven, um, trying to also get some depth inside of it. And I also kept in mind where uh, the light source was going to be. It's at my place, it's in the middle of my oven. Uh, so I kept it lighter there, uh, my grey markers. And here is my yellow, so I just added it and then for the oven plate it was a bit too yellow. I just went over it with that same really soft grey um, and then that's it. So for the rest of the colouring, since it's quite the same as I always do, I will put on some music and I will be back afterwards.
everything colored in, I'm using the matching dye to die cut them all and then I can continue with my background. So for the background, I'm using this dye from my elephant. It's called All Pretty Up and I've die cut it from Nina uh, and I'm now going to partially die cut it from my pattern paper and therefore I'm using the grids on my craft mat. Uh, I'm just lining the pattern paper and now I'm using that oven as a guideline as well as the lines on my craft mat again to line it up straight. So now on to my sentiment. I'm just taking the smaller sentiment from the stamp set and I am going to add it in black ink. So the white Nina is to really have some grounding as well to let everything stand on and sit on. Um, but it was a bit too white so I took the antique linen and I ink blended a bit on the bottom. So I traced where the pattern paper was uh, when it was covering the rest of the panel. And I made sure that I had enough of the antique linen peeking underneath it. And I'm also adding it to the edges of my panel. For the pattern paper I also wanted to create a bit more depth so I took the evergreen bow and I also went all over the edges and as soon as that is finished all the elements are ready to go. To adhere this on top of each other I am using my permanent print adhesive roller and then the other elements will be adhered with some liquid glue as well as with some foam squares. Before adhering my final mouse, I'm first going to add some glossy accents on top of uh, this window from the oven to make it a bit more realistic. But I saw that I forgot the face and while lining it up, I, I smeared the ink on top of that little piece. So I took my sand eraser and I went like a crazy person over it to get the ink off. And I was super happy that it worked out. Um, and then I stamped the face again. So now onto my glossy accents as I told you. I'm just covering that glass completely. Um, and I'm doing this first because my last mouse will overlap a bit with the window and then it's 
it gets harder to really um, get that glossy accent going everywhere so first doing the glossy accent and then you can also decide to wait but I'm really impatient so um, I just continued uh, while the glossy accent was still wet uh, something I had to do first but I forgot was to adhere this panel on top of a card base then I wouldn't have to wait to finish my card uh, <laughs> while the glossy accent is drying but yeah it happens um, and then I took this amazing <laughs> and I have it already for a while it's a quickie glue pen uh, and I just scribbled it on the edges of this um, yeah, I don't know how you call this. It's um, a little jar with uh, with sprinkles, in my opinion. So, uh, so I wanted some glitter on top of that, and also on those cookies that are lying underneath it. So I also went with the same pen uh, over some of the spots on the cookies to add some glitter there as well. And then when all the final elements are adhered, I adhered this panel on top of a card base, but I didn't do it on camera. Uh, but therefore I used some Scotch 3M foam tape uh, just to give some extra dimension and this card will be finished. So I really hope that you enjoyed this card design and that you also like the pink one if you checked it out. Uh, if you have any questions you can always leave them down below and I will try to answer them as quick as possible. If you like this card, give it a thumbs up. That's truly appreciated. And yeah, I hope to see you next time again. Bye.